You guys know I love myself an old god whisperer too. I always find them interesting, just love to talk about them, delve into them, figure out what they're all about. Those old gods, they know what's coming. After all, they can see every pathway into the future. Right? The difference between them and the Titans is they see a thousand truths. They know all the truths. They just don't know which one's going to happen. Whereas the Titans, you know, they see the one truth that they try to make happen. So it's always interesting to listen to those old god whispers because a lot of times there is true meaning behind them. So let's see what this is. These old god whispers predicted the entire expansion from the teller of a thousand truths himself, Doran. Let's see what this video is all about. So the surface blazer's prime to mask in the shadows below seems to be really referring to Peladar in the Dark Andrew Cycle Blue. from Hellofall. The King of Diamonds being made upon is almost certainly Magni, very likely no, being ahead. manipulated by Zalatat and the Void. Five keys to open our way is us getting the five artifacts to defeat Sergeras back at Legion. Remember, we stopped Sergeras, yep. the main enemy of the Void Lords, therefore opening the way for the Void to focus all their efforts on invading Azeroth. Now, I know these whispers didn't originally have any deep meaning and they were vague, but we also know that originally Zaltet was just a dagger with a little bit of flavor text that is now a mega villain of an entire saga. It's so obvious, Blizzard is picking back up where they left off in Legion and it looks like they may be filling in the gaps with the old god whispers they left back in Legion all these years later. So let's examine how these whispers predict the war within. Go. With the war within out, the best way to optimize your game is with the trade skill master add-on. It's for everyone, whether you just want to make gold or you're flipping millions. Oh, wow, it can help you manage your auctions, post items in bulk, find the best deals. It can help Where's your Caden? professions love this you see what's the most profitable thing to craft. Best of all, TSM now has a new premium package that can put you on a whole other level with a vast database that will help you make informed decisions on what to buy and when to sell. So make sure to click the link in the description and get 15% off your first Ooh. purchase of premium TSM package. Look at that. So, I know no one is really taking these whispers seriously and that we've been attributing this to pretty much everyone and everything that is currently going on from BFA to Shadowlands to Dragonflight and every little hint we get. And Blizzard, of course, did purposefully make these Ilganaut whispers wake so they can fit anything. It's certain... Yeah, the best thing about the whispers and the reason why they've kind of hung around for so long is, yes, they can be interpreted to mean a hundred different things, which is very old god-esque, right? They always speak in riddles. And they always, they, a lot of times, the things they are saying do have multiple meanings because, like I said, they're seeing multiple truths, multiple futures. So uh, th that's the fun of them is figuring out, okay, which, what did they mean by this? Because there are so many ways to interpret them. I do think the King of Diamonds, for sure, I think that's Magni at this point, was been made upon. I think for sure the, the Magni King of Diamonds has to be him. Um, the other stuff, uh, Circle of Stars, Drown Yourself in the Circle of Stars. Oh, could that could that have been back in um, when we fought? Oh God, what's her name? The Queen of the Naga. Oh, yeah, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on her name. But anyways, we were down there drowning, and we we ended up in a big circle platform in the in you know in the middle of the ocean. That was an yes, Azara, my bad. And uh, so that was an interesting one. Flesh is a gift. He is your true creator. Okay, we're talking about gift of flesh, things like that. I agree with a lot of this stuff. What they all mean in the end, eh, I guess we'll find out throughout the World Soul Saga for sure. That they obviously didn't have anything in mind when they originally wrote them. However, what is almost certain as well is that now they're getting filled in, and for that, we got two big reasons. One is that literally the entire Void Black Empire thing is coming down, crashing in on our heads in the War Within and the World Soul Saga, so there is really nothing else that is going to be happening later down the line with the Old Gods and the Void Lords. Yeah, these that's it. Old Gods. Vo it's time to put up or shut up. All this has to be revealed now because these Old Gods, uh, they're already dead but the the void in general should not survive beyond the last titan i would think void lords and all sorts of like these void crazies have been going at it on azeroth for thousands of years really setting up what is about to happen soon which blizzard has confirmed to be the final battle against the void so previous you know yeah talking about shadowland sigils being related to the old god of whispers was definitely a leech but here in this expansion and the next two, we're literally dealing with everything these guys have been cooking for us since they had arrived. Like, there really is no going further 
other than this. Second point I want to make is that while Blizzard has left them awake at a time, it's certain that they're now filling in the gaps and that is really for two reasons. One is that if you can see the new Chris Metzen interview when he returned, he really turned things upside down. Blizzard he was already working on this expansion, but he significantly right. shifted the narrative. It's so obvious yeah. Chris Metzen is picking up from where he left off, which was back at the end of Legion, and now he's... It, it does certainly feel like the War Within picks up from Legion. Like, you, I think you could have skipped Dragonflight and um, Shadowlands, and you'd be perfectly fine in terms of lore. Like, if the last expansion you played was Legion, this would make total sense to you. There is nothing from this expansion so far that you needed to know Dragonflight or... Uh, or uh, Shadowlands lore. Now, once a Riddicrod shows up, okay, maybe you would need to learn something from Dragonflight at that point. Uh, but as of right now, there is nothing you need to know about anything from Dragonflight. Continuing the whole story. Could have skipped BFA, too. You could have skipped BFA. No, no, it doesn't matter. That BFA, Shadowlands, Dragonflight stuff was really filler, just noise that is still relevant, but not really by a lot. Chris Metzen obviously had a vision with the sword and that Legion ending that he is continuing now. Everything is picking back up from Legion, the sword, Illidan, Sergera, Zelotad, Titans, that really, it feels like The War Within is a sequel to Legion, which is why these whispers are now relevant. Furthermore, you might have seen the Blizzard of the interview, but they sort of confirmed that Zelotad wasn't really written as a half dozen expansion mega villain she was literally just a cheeky sassy dagger that gave you some interesting whispers some flavor text that people loved a lot so they decided to expand upon her in bfa and right. now they made her like the villain of the entire city yeah yeah i don't know what this is i, I haven't seen this yet and i hope it's not spoiling anything but um yes zalotet being picked up as a main storyline villain was something that they did. They confirmed that that was not the plan when Zalateth was first revealed as a Legion legendary for Shadow Priests. But here she is doing her thing because a lot of love came her way from the from the player base, which gives me confidence and hope that we do in fact see Sire Denathrius again, because he is very much the same story, right? Where he showed up, he was a villain in Shadowlands, and I think Blizzard wasn't expecting him to get the kind of love that he did from the community, and so they decided, you know what? This guy might come back. He might show up once again. And that's and that was confirmed by Blizzard's team that, in fact, their plans for Sire Denathrius were expanded after the player's reaction to him. Same with Buon Samdi, actually. He was somebody who uh, they found players loved a lot more than they expected. So these kinds of things, you know, show your love for the characters you love. And, hey, we might see them more often. I do think Sire is going to play some role in the World Soul Saga. We just don't know yet. Or show up at the very end, for all we know is that is moving the entire World Soul Saga. So, Zelotet also started as a pretty vague, barely fleshed out character, but now they filled in the gaps with what is relevant. I think the same thing will be happening with the Whispers of Ilganaut that are essentially predicting the War Within and the World Soul Saga. So, let's start with the most obvious ones. Five keys to open our way, five torches to light our path. Our way, while we're talking about the old gods, now really seems to be the void way, the cosmological force void way, like opening the way and lighting yeah. the path for the void. From this current perspective, what seems very likely is that the five keys really were the pillars of creation that most people associated them with. These were the keys. We yeah, I agree. I think those are the five keys. Five torches could be the dragonflight, uh, you know, sigils that we lit. The those things were so pointless. I don't even know if they if they were relevant at all at this point. But uh, most definitely, I think he's right about this, that we have those uh, Used in those artifacts that we gathered in Legion. ...order to imprison and defeat Sergeras. Yeah. Now, how is this opening their way? Well, think about it. Sergeras, while being the our enemy, pillars. was really the main enemy of the Void in the entire Burning Legion was even created in the first place to battle the Void. We were sort of collateral damage caught in the middle. While they did invade our planet, the bulk of their forces was constantly fighting the Void forces across the universe. So, when we used the Five Keys to imprison their main enemy, the Titan Keys, and break the army, we had essentially opened the way for the Void to come in. They no longer had to deal with the Legion BS. They can now put all their focus True. on Azeroth. Think about it. They had like 90% of their forces on Garrison defending against demons all over the universe. They could only really send small incursions into our planet, which is why we dealt with the occasional old god. We saw some small void invasions. However, yeah. now they got their hands open and we have opened their way. The second line, five torches to light our path, could also refer to the same thing, but I do think this is in fact referring yeah. to Dragonflight and the Oath Stones. The yeah, Oathstone I think it could be the Oath Stones. I mean, maybe they tie them in in some way and say they were the five torches, but man, the way they were presented in Dragonflight, they were so important early on. 
and then it feels like they just disappeared. Like it's just completely gone, like a dildo in the wind. It's just got, it doesn't matter anymore. And is and I didn't understand why we never <laughs> talked about them again. But they uh, they surely felt irrelevant by the end of the expansion. But hey, maybe they bring relevance back to them again. Once while used the ultimate decree dragon. Could it be the five old gods or the torch? What I mean is that when you really think about it from this current perspective, the entire dragon fight storyline was just one giant filler. Like we released some primal incarnates, dealt with a rogue one, while the entire point heard, of the story was really for Zelda to get her hands on the dark heart, the essence of Yalakron, and to do what she is doing now. So we opened their way, we lit their path to go further into what they are doing now. The main reason I think the torches refer to the old stones is because they're literally five old stones and they're quite literally torches that we have lit. So that is referring to the most popular one. But let's look at this one. That's yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I, what did I say earlier? I have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't say that. Uh, but uh, yes, the 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 old stones being the five torches are the one. Now this this theory is about to say I don't know. Actually, it's more it is. relevant than ever now with the war within. Its surface blazes bright, masking shadows below. I know, this one is super vague, but I don't know about you, but to me, this seems like a huge reference to Beladar, which is like the key. Yeah, masking shadows below. It surfaces, what, what was it? Say it again, say it again, Doran, say it again. Uh, it surfaces, its surface blazes light, masking shadows below. That makes sense. Yeah, it could be Beladar, for sure. Its surface blazes light, and the shadows below could be Ashkahet, or maybe even deeper. I do think we have, at some point... Uh, we're going to get an expatch, uh, ex a patch where maybe we open a new part of Ashkahet that's even deeper in the ground than we currently see. Because Ashkahet does feel kind of small compared to the other zones. So I, I see that happening in the future. So maybe the shadows below, we're going to delve further into that. I know, this one is super vague, but I don't know about you, but to me, this seems like a huge reference to Beladar, which is like the key part of this new expansion. Obviously, the surface of this mysterious gigantic crystal blazes bright, but the masking shadows below has multiple meanings. First, is that the entire story of Hellfall is that the crystal is transforming into the void, and that it is a pretty worrying thing, as in, it might not return back to the light. One of the recent theories, based on the information that we have from the expansion, is that it might be related to the old god blood. We know from in-game dialogue that the crystal first shifted when Sergeras hit the planet with the sword and also the old god blood that was previously dormant in the surrounding zones awoke which means Sergeras must have somehow pushed the blood of Katoon or something and just started moving it and awoke the blood. It is possible Maybe. that the old god blood that arrived or pushed the one that was already there is what is really corrupting the crystal. As you might know, old god blood is magical. You might remember Serenite that significantly oh, impacted yeah. Northrend or the blood of Yashiraj that changed the entire continent of Pandaria. So masking shadows below could mean that the crystal is filled with old god blood and this thing they're doing to return it back is uh, really just putting a band-aid and a temporary solution crystal, that ultimately won't work. However, the crystal is filled with old god blood. That's what he said. That's what it could add on. I still subscribe to the idea that there's a Naru in there. The fact that this thing didn't start switching uh, from void to light until the Sargeras' sword plunged into the earth tells me that uh, that's a typical Naru thing. Right, they don't typically start switching until they are they become either very old or they get damaged. We've seen them that when they get damaged, they start to switch more. So it would make sense. Sword plunged into the earth, crazy shaking of the entirety of Azeroth caused some damage to the Naru, and now it starts to switch back and forth. That's why that's I think the biggest hint that there is in fact a Naru in here. Old got blood. I don't know what inside. Probably not. I, I don't think that's right. It could also refer to the fact that the crystal is shining bright up in Hellafall, but the old god blood is going crazy in the rootlands and Ashkahed below, which yeah, the Nerubians be. are farming. There is also the so-called undersea and all sorts of crazy void beings there that you might have seen throughout the quest lines. So some crazy dark shadows really are in the zones below the giant shining crystal that Zelatad is really interested in, hence recruiting the Nerubians. Now the next one yeah. is super interesting. The King of Diamonds has been made a pawn. This is so obvious to the Frank yeah, Magni, gotta be Magni. quite literally the King of Diamonds, and this is a theory. This is like one of the ones that I'm most sure of, is that, yeah, the King of Diamonds is Magni. ...that I previously talked about. Based on the recent quest lines we have seen from the expansion, I do think his form might be sort of related to the World Sword, or at least some... There, there's the underlying theory that it's Gallywix, and Gallywix is actually a Dreadlord or something. Like, the old Gallywix died a long time ago, and there's a Dreadlord actually running around as Gallywix. That's a cool twist, you know, because he has a diamond on his staff, you know, a little diamond on his cane. Uh, would be cool, but I think really it's it's 
it's Magni. That's probably what um, it is. Earthen thing, which is why he managed to save those Earthen from the void. However, I still think it is highly likely that he might have never actually communicated with the World Soul and that Zelatek has been playing him all along. Like, we don't really even know what the World Soul is. You have seen that Zelatek is known to possess and pretend to be someone else. I mean, that is literally how Deldran was this destroyed. Was cool Magni moment. has been sort of leading us into this entire thing. He is the one that ultimately led us to Cancel Guard in the first place. He also led us previously to drain our artifacts and specifically drain the artifact the Zelda dagger directly. I still think that's a big play, right? I still think this is a big thing that we took. Just imagine if you're the void and you want to, you know, take over a planet or come back and have the least resistance possible, weaken the denizens or anything that could resist you, what would you do? Why don't you have them gather the most powerful weapons that the entirety of Azeroth has to offer and drain their power into the sword? Just saying, like, it, it makes sense. Like, yeah, that's a good way to take over a planet is to make sure that the best resistance that could possibly come up against you has now lost its power completely. I, I don't know if we'll ever get the power back, but I do think it's very interesting that the best weapons we've ever known in the game now have no power whatsoever. Drain the essentially became great items the dagger directly into the sword of Sargeras. I think it is entirely possible that the King of Diamonds really was made a pawn, and that all this speaker thing has been a plan of Zalatat. As you might have seen, he has now lost his form, which is a little bit crazy, seeing that Astroth needs him now most than ever, as she is in grave danger. So I think I this know, one might be the most relevant, and that Magni has led us into all sorts of troubles, and has furthered the interests of Zalatat without even knowing. Now the next one is the famous, the Lord of Ravens will turn the key. This one is a little bit weird. Immediately I would associate it with yeah. Khadgar as he is in Raven 4. And I do, I do think it's Khadgar. I do, um, don't forget, in the cinematic, his Raven Staff, which is very much famous, it is the thing that uh, gives him the ability to turn into a Raven. This staff is Medivh's staff. It's it's known as, you know, the staff of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the most powerful mage always carries it. And... It's, uh, the Guardian, I should say, always carries it. And it's interesting that it breaks in the cinematic, right? Where she blasts him from the chest, you've seen it, it shatters on the ground in two pieces. So, uh, Lord of the Ravens, I think that was an interesting little cue that, oh yeah, don't forget he's Lord of the Ravens. He's gonna turn the key. I don't think he's dead, personally. I think he's been taken into the void by Zalateth. He's still alive, maybe being mind-controlled in some way, and he's gonna, in fact, turn the key. We'll see. Would associate it with I'm not gonna as he is in Raven 4. <laughs> we have seen him multiple times in Raven 4. We know Zaltat had imprisoned him, so I was thinking he would do something later down the line. However, if you get seen the most yep. recent cinematic, he literally escaped and Anduin has resurrected him. The thing is, though, we don't really know what is possible later down the line. It isn't certain whether the arrow hitting the Dark Heart freed Khadgar and that allowed him a brief moment to escape. Or oh, God, man, what the, the hell is this shit? I didn't see this yet. My God, why are they sh he's showing the damn spoil? Spoilers all along. Zeldad obviously captured him, planning to taunt Illyria. I would say in her desperation, it is possible she released him, but she could have implanted something in his mind, because remember, the Void always works through mind control, and later this could activate to turn the key. It is also possible that this yeah, already happened, like this event already occurred. Keep in mind, the Pawn King of Diamonds told us about Kazlagar to lure us into the battle against the Nerubians, and the Lord of Ravens, Khadgar, had teleported to Delran, so he might have already turn the key true and it is yeah, he's right this moment right here could be the turning of the key i mean she did drain dalaran's power into uh into the heart so he could have already turned the key that's right i actually that's this could be a the right theory here possible that these two predictions have already happened now the last one is, her heart is a crater and we have filled it. This could of course be referring to the Dark Heart and previously could people be. thought this was Sylvanas, but somehow I feel like this is all referring to the World Soul and the Old God Blood. The World Soul is a she, so her heart and her heart is a crater and we have filled it. I actually think that is the Dark Heart. If I had to like pick right now what that could be, I don't think it's Azeroth's heart. I think it is the Dark Heart and she is in fact filling it. And we're helping her do it without knowing it. Oh, no spoilers for you. You got to finish the campaign. We I know. I'm trying. We're going to finish it today. A pool of old Hopefully. Blood flowing in like the foundations of the planet. So her heart being a crater was literally filled with black blood of the old gods that Zelda is now extracting and going crazy with it. Now, 
of course, as I said, I know Blizzard obviously didn't have any of this in mind originally, but as I stated, they also didn't have anything in mind with Zelotad, and now she's a 3 expansion villain that is really the longest ongoing villain since the Lich King, so I do think they're picking back up the Legion storyline and continuing on where they had left off in the World Soul Saga. Thank you for watching, check out the possible animated Warcraft series by clicking on the screen and check out my video on Ancient Training by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time. <laughs> yeah, great video, besides the random clips that I don't want to see. But um, yeah, revisiting the old God Whispers I think is always fun when an expansion kicks off because you can really start to relate a lot of them. And uh, I think a lot of them we have been revealed to us already and some have yet to come to fruition. We'll see, but definitely all the old God Whispers I think by the end of the World Soul Saga We'll know exactly what they were, which is cool. Which is cool.